When your computer crashes, one person is inconvenienced. When the cloud crashes, hospitals cancel procedures, airlines ground flights, payment systems stop, and entire companies go dark all at once. Using the cloud is a bit like flying commercial instead of driving. Most of the time, it's safer, smoother, and somebody else is doing the work. But when something goes wrong at 35,000 feet, it does not just affect you. Everybody's coming down together. And yet here we are telling ourselves that the cloud is safer. And that belief didn't come from nowhere. It came from decades of real progress and reliability. But something quietly changed along the way. We didn't actually eliminate failures. We concentrated them. Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. I'm Dave Plummer, a retired software engineer from Microsoft, going back to the MS-DOS and Windows 95 days. And today I want to take apart a very popular idea, that the cloud is automatically safer than your own computer. Not better, not cheaper, not more convenient, but safer. Because depending on what you mean by safe, the cloud can be amazing, or it can be a single point of failure that you voluntarily rent by the month. And by the end of this, I want you to notice something next time there's a big outage. It's not usually the hardware. It's usually the stuff we added to make the hardware invisible. First, we need to define what safer even means because this whole myth survives by mixing a few different meanings together. Sometimes people will mean durability. Will my data still exist next year? Sometimes they mean availability. Can I get to it right now? And sometimes they mean privacy. Who can see it? Sometimes they mean security. Who can change it, steal it, encrypt it, or ransom it? And sometimes they mean recoverability. After something goes wrong, can I get back to normal quickly? And do I even know what normal looks like? The cloud is genuinely good at some of these. So let's give it credit before we start throwing punches. A decent cloud provider can absolutely beat the average person's basement server on physical security, power redundancy, cooling, fire suppression, disk monitoring, and replacement logistics. They have teams whose only job is to keep storage alive. They can spread your data across multiple devices, multiple racks, sometimes multiple buildings with automatic repair. So if your MacBook dies, your iCloud photos probably survive. That's real. So why do I say that the cloud is safer is a myth? Because the cloud doesn't just change where your bits live. It changes your failure domain. The cloud trades local isolated failures for centralized correlated failures. It makes a lot of individual problems go away and replaces them with fewer problems that are much bigger when they do happen. And if that sentence makes you a little uncomfortable, good. At least you're paying attention. Now, I've lived through three big eras of computing. Mainframes, personal computers, and now the cloud. Now, mainframes were centralized by nature. You had one big system professionally operated with serious money behind reliability. Downtime wasn't considered annoying. Downtime was everybody stops working. So the culture was very disciplined. Change control was a thing. Backups were a thing. Operators were a thing. You didn't ship on Friday because Friday was when you wanted to go home. And then PCs showed up and we got decentralized. Suddenly you had thousands of little computers scattered everywhere. The reliability of any one PC wasn't great, but the blast radius when it went wrong was tiny. If your PC crashed, your neighbors didn't. If your spreadsheet was corrupted, odds are the whole company didn't lose payroll. We traded the reliability of one big machine for the fault isolation of many small machines. But now we've re-centralized again, but at a scale that the mainframe era never imagined. The cloud is like a planet-sized mainframe, and the problem is that we're trying to run it with the development habits we've made in the PC era. And here's the key point. Centralization does not just aggregate compute and storage. It also aggregates risk. In the PC era, a lot of things were naturally independent. Your machine had its own disk, its own OS, its own login, its own local applications. You could be offline and still get work done. In the cloud era, we've built systems that are online by definition. And then we layer dependencies on top of dependencies until online means depends on 50 other services that you don't control. So what does a modern outage actually look like? Well, it rarely starts with a power outage or a disk failure. Those things happen every day, and the cloud is actually really good at absorbing them. Modern outages usually start with something much more human. A configuration change, a software rollout, a policy update, a certificate rotation, a permissions tweak, a bad route advertisement, a DNS change. Something that looks safe because it's just software. And then it cascades. And here's why it cascades. Most cloud systems are designed as layers. There's the stuff you think you're paying for, like your VMs, your containers, your databases, your object storage, your queues, your CDN. Underneath that is the control plane. The systems that create, delete, scale, configure, authenticate, authorize, and monitor the stuff that you think you're actually paying for. And underneath that, there's a web of shared services like identity, logging, metrics, time, DNS, key management, policy engines, orchestration, service discovery, and network control. Those shared services are great when they work. 
They let a handful of engineers run what used to require a building full of operators. But they also create a new kind of fragility. When the control plane is sick, your service may still be running, but you can't touch it. And if you can't log in, you can't fix it. If your identity provider is down, your break glass account might be down too because maybe you put it in the same identity server. And if your DNS is down, your monitoring might be down, your paging might be down, your dashboards might be down, and the worst part is that you're blind while the fire is spreading. If your logging pipeline is down, it's like you're debugging with a flashlight during an earthquake. And when you're debugging a distributed system, blind is not an inconvenience, it's more akin to an extinction event. There's another nasty trick that distributed systems play on you. They don't just fail up or down. They sometimes fail weird. Sometimes the service is up, but it's really slow. Sometimes it responds, but only some of the time. Sometimes one region is fine while another is degraded and your load balancer keeps sending traffic to the sick one because it hasn't noticed yet. And these kinds of things are called gray failures. And gray failures are often worse than clean failures because clean failures stop quickly. Gray failures poison everything around them. Clients retry, queues back up, timeouts trigger failover. Failover creates more load. More load creates more timeouts. And now the system is melting down, not because anything is broken in a dramatic way, but because everything is broken in a small way at the same time. And so yes, hardware fails, but the really scary outages are usually software configuration and coordination failures. And this is one of the most unsettling truths about modern reliability. We built systems that assume the control plane is always available. In the mainframe era, we assumed the opposite. We assumed things would break, so we built procedures for running degraded. We had operator consoles, we had out-of-band access, we had physical separation. We knew that if the fancy stuff failed, you still needed a way in, even if it was like a tape punch or a tape reader or something. But in the cloud era, the fancy stuff is the way in. Now you might be thinking, okay, fine, but that's why we have multiple regions, multiple zones, multiple availability domains, redundancy, problem solved. Well, sometimes, but not always. Because redundancy is not the same thing as independence. If your two backup generators share the same fuel tank, you don't have redundancy, you just have a larger fuel line. And if your primary and your failover run the same software, deployed by the same pipeline, configured by the same policy engine, authenticated by the same identity provider, and maybe named by the same DNS, then you don't have independence. You have two copies of the same assumptions, and assumptions fail together. And this is why so many of the big outages are correlated. It's not that there aren't backups. It's that the backups depend on the same things that the primary depends on. And this is where people get fooled by the numbers. They'll see three nines or four nines of availability and think, well, that sounds pretty rock solid. Well, here's what three nines actually means. 99.9% .9 uptime, which still allows for 43 minutes of downtime per month or almost nine hours per year. Four nines is better, but it still allows for real outages and it doesn't count partial failures where the service is technically up, but practically unusable. And an even more important point is that an SLA is not a safety guarantee, it's just a refund policy. If your business loses $100,000 because the dependency went down, the SLA might get you a credit on next month's bill. Congratulations, you can almost buy a sandwich. And so yes, availability matters, but your real question is what happens when this breaks, not what percentage does the brochure claim? Now you might say, fine, I'll just run it on two clouds. And people say multi-cloud the way they say, eh, just add another hard drive. But if you truly want independence across clouds, you have to accept the cost of independence, which is different tooling, different APIs, different deployment methods, different monitoring, different authentication, different runbooks, different people who know what to do when it breaks. And that's not free. In fact, it's usually the opposite of what motivated people to go to the cloud in the first place. So if you're not buying independence, what are you buying? Well, you're buying convenience and scale. And that's not a bad deal. It's just not the same thing as safety. Now let's talk about the other reason that this myth persists. People confuse security with availability. Security is about preventing bad things from happening. Unauthorized access, tampering, data theft, data corruption, fraud. Availability is about being able to use your system when you need it. A system can be very secure and very unavailable. In fact, a lot of security mechanisms fail in the direction of being unavailable because failing closed is better than failing open. Multi-factor authentication is a great example. It stops attackers. It also stops when your phone is dead, or when your authenticator app is broken, or you got a new phone and forgot to transfer it, or when your tokens are out of sync, or when your identity provider is down, or when a policy change locks everybody out. And key management is another example. Rotating keys and certificates is good hygiene, but if you rotate the wrong thing at the wrong time, you can take down everything that depends on it. And the more modern your architecture is, it probably means the more things that depend on it. 
And so yes, the cloud often improves security, but it can be done by reducing availability and people experience availability as the cloud is down. Here's a mental image I like. The safest bank vault design in the world is one without a door. Great security, but terrible availability. Now let's add one more accelerant, the software as a service monoculture. It's not just that your application runs in the cloud, it's that your email is in the cloud, your documents are in the cloud, your identity is in the cloud, your ticketing system is in the cloud, your monitoring is in the cloud, your status page is in the cloud, and sometimes even your phone system is in the cloud. So when a shared provider has a bad day, it's not just one service is down, it's often your organization's nervous system is down. You can't communicate, you can't authenticate, you can't deploy a fix, you can't see logs, you can't coordinate a response, you can't tell customers what's happening because the place you post updates to is also down. You can't phone for help because your voice over IP system is also down. And that's not really a technology failure, that's an organizational failure domain that got bigger than your organization. And if you're an individual, this shows up in smaller but very personal ways. You can't get to your photos, you can't get to your password manager, you can't get to your email, and suddenly you can't log into anything else because password resets go through the email that you can't get to. The cloud didn't just centralize storage, it also centralized identity. Now, let's bring AI into this because AI is the newest layer that we're stacking on top of everything else. Most AI services today are centralized by necessity because inference is expensive, GPUs are scarce, and latency matters. So we concentrate compute and then we expose them as APIs. And that's fine until it becomes a dependency. If your application has a smart assistant feature and the AI endpoint is down, you can fail gracefully and just turn off that feature. But if your customer support, your fraud detection, your search ranking, your moderation, your code review, your automatic operations, and your incident triage all depend on an AI endpoint, then the AI is down becomes your business is down. And AI is also being used to automate change. And that's the part that really should make you a little uneasy. Because automation is wonderful when it's correct. And automation is terrifying when it goes wrong. Because it can do the wrong thing everywhere instantly and confidently. If you've ever watched like a simple bad update rollout, you know this feeling. Now imagine the update is not just a binary update, it's a new policy or a model or an automatically generated configuration or an automatically generated firewall rule, or an automatically generated access permission. The speed of failure goes up and the time in which you have to notice goes down. This is why I keep coming back to that core idea that we didn't eliminate failure, we concentrated it. Okay, so does that mean you should run everything on your own computer, unplugged from the internet and live in a cabin? Perhaps, but it's not what I'm saying. Well, the cloud is incredibly good at certain things. If you need global distribution, the cloud is great. If you need elasticity to handle big spikes, seasonal traffic, or sudden growth, then the cloud is great. If you need durable storage with automatic repair, the cloud is great. If you need to avoid running a data center, again, the cloud is great. But you should stop treating cloud as a synonym for safe because the cloud doesn't remove risk, it just moves it. It trades one set of risks for another. So what should you do practically? Well, if you're an individual, the simplest advice is to keep at least one copy of the stuff you truly care about under your direct control. Photos, documents, credentials, backup codes. The things that would ruin your week if they vanished or became inaccessible. And that doesn't mean don't use the cloud. It means don't only use the cloud. Use a real backup strategy too. The boring one, multiple copies, three, two, one, multiple places, one of them offline. And for the love of all that is holy, test your restore process once in a while. Backups that you've never actually restored from are not backups. They're just wishful thinking with a progress bar. Also, be sure to think about identity as a dependency. If losing access to your email locks you out of your bank, your utilities, your taxes, your business accounts, your entire digital life, then you don't have a resilience plan. You have a single point of failure with a nice user interface. So keep recovery codes somewhere safe. Have secondary contact methods. Have a way to prove that you are who you are when the normal path is broken. And if you're a business, the advice is really the same conceptually, just more expensive. Design for independence, not just redundancy. Ask the uncomfortable questions. What happens if the identity provider is down? What happens if DNS is down? What happens if the monitoring is down? What happens if the control plane is down, but your service is still running? Can you scale? Can you roll back? Can you change the configuration? Can you even reach the machines? Do you have out of band access? Do you have a break glass path that is actually and truly separate? And do you actually practice it and have you done so recently? because the day you discover you don't have it is the day that you're already in trouble. Also, be honest about your dependencies. If your multi-region setup still depends on a single global database, a single global certificate authority, a single global key store, a single global policy engine, or a single pipeline that deploys everywhere, 
then your blast radius is still global. And that might be an acceptable trade if you understand it and you accept it. The myth is pretending that you bought safety when you really bought convenience. Let's go back to that opening analogy of how the cloud is like flying commercial instead of driving. Statistically, flying is safer. Professional operators, redundant systems, strict procedures. But when an airliner has a problem, the consequences are correlated. Hundreds of people are affected at once, not just one driver on the side of the road. And the fixes are often out of your hands. That doesn't mean you shouldn't fly. It means you should understand what you're trading. The cloud is a lot like that. It's professional, it's powerful, it's efficient. And when it fails, it tends to fail at scale. So the next time you hear somebody say, don't worry, it's in the cloud, translate that in your head to the more accurate version. It's on somebody else's computer, and the failure modes are no different. And that sentence alone will hopefully make you design differently. It will make you back up differently. It will make you choose dependencies differently. It will make you a lot less surprised next time a minor issue turns into a global incident. And the cloud isn't evil, but it isn't magic. It's just centralization again. And centralization has always come with some kind of price. In the next episode of this series, I want to tackle another belief that sounds comforting and often half true, that if it's encrypted, it's private. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss it. Check out the free sample of my book on the autism spectrum, link in the video description. It's everything I know now about living a successful life on the spectrum that I wish I'd known long ago. Thanks for joining me out here in the shop today. In the meantime and in between time, I hope to see you next time, right here in Dave's Garage. Ba -da -ba -da -ba 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 -ba.